we are going to discuss 806 pin configuration in this lecture. Now, this is the pin diagram of 806 microprocessor. So, 806 microprocessor is a 40 pin dual in package integrated circuit. So, whatever the different signals or different pins connected to this IC are connected in dual in package. So, it has the pin connection from two sides of the IC. So, it is a 40 pin IC available to that. Now, we are going to see which are the pins available to this 806 so that it can be connected to the external environment. Now, firstly, it has the 16 bit of address or data line. Now, as we discussed in the some previous lectures that microprocessor needs to send a address. Also, it needs to access some data. Now, for accessing that data or accessing that address, it needs some pins to be connected. So, for that purpose, it has the 16 bit address line that is AD0 to AD15. Now, this address line is multiplexed with the data bus lines. So, it can it is used in a multiplex mode. Multiplex means the same pins can be used for address and the same pins can be used for carrying the data also. Now, for this purpose, there is one more pin called as ALE address latch enable use. So, whenever the address latch enable is 1, this line carries the address and when the address latch enable becomes 0, this line carries the data. Further, it can have, it has the 4 more bits of the data lines, 4 more bits of the address lines that is AD6, A16 to A19 which are multiplexed with the 4 status signals S3, S4, S5 and S6. Now, these 4 lines are being used for multi use for sending the higher 4 bits of the address which is being sent from the 806 microprocessor. So, as we have discussed in the features of microprocessor 806, it has 16 bit of data bus and 20 bit of address bus. So, that is why the 16 bit of data bus is multiplexed with the address and the further 4 bits are being multiplexed with the status. So, by combining these 4 bits that is higher 4 bits that is A16 to A19, we are getting the uh, combining this A16 to A19 with AD0 to AD15, we are getting the 20 bit of address. So, actually the 20 bit of address sent to the outside environment are being sent from a0 to A19 pins of the 8086. Now, there are 4 status signals available that is S6, S5, S3 and S4. Now, S6 is always remains 0. Again, S5 indicates the condition of inter flag whether the inter flag is enabled or disabled. And the combination of S4 and S3 is used to indicate which segment of the memory is being currently used. Now, since there are 4 segments of the memory, the combination of S3 and S4 is used for stating that which segment is ex exactly accessing by the, from the memory. Now, since there are 4 segments, so when there is a combination 0, 0 on S4 and S3, the extra segment is being accessed. When there is a combination of 0, 1, the stack segment is being accessed. When the combination is 1, 0, the core segment is being accessed. And when the combination of S4 and S3 is 1, 1 respectively, the data segment is being accessed. Next pin is read that is RD bar. Now, RD bar signifies it is a active low signal and also this as you can see the, this is the output line. So, this RD bar signal is used for reading the data from the memory. So, when this signal read signal pin becomes logic 0, the data bus is receptive or data from for the data from memory or IO devices. So, it decides the direction of data bus which is being connected to the 8086. So, whether it is an input mode or output mode that is decided. So, when this read signal becomes 0 which is active low, the direction of this data bus is receptive that is coming inwards. Next pin is ready pin. This pin is used to enforce a waiting state 
that ready state pin is zero, the microprocessor goes into idle mode. When the ready pin is one, the microprocessor does a normal operation. So, in whenever the microprocessor is interface with the whether it is the input output devices or whether it is the memory, the speed of operation of microprocessor and the speed of operation of other interfacing devices are not same. So, we need to give some more time states in that case. So, by using this ready state, we can decide whether to insert any more states into the 806 or whether the 806 is the idle mode. So, for that purpose, the ready signal becomes 0 or 1. Next is interrupt request. Interrupt request that is INTR line that is active high signal that is being input signal available to the 8086. So, interrupt request pin is used to request the hardware interrupt. So, whenever ha any hardware which is being connected in the system with the help of 8086, it sends its request to this INTR pin. If the INTR pin is high and if the interrupt flag which is available in the flag register is 1, the processor goes into the interrupt acknowledge cycle. So, it will acknowledge the interrupt which is being given from this INTR pin and the service of this respective 8086 is given to the respective device. So, whatever the signal sent by the hardware to the 8086 for getting service that is being taken from the INTR. Next is test bar. Again, it is an active low signal. That bar indicates it is active low. The test pin is an input that is tested by the weights instruction. If the test pin is at logic 0, the weights instruction function as an NOP. If the test is logic 1, the weights instruction waits for test pin become to 0. So, whenever we need to add some weight instruction, so how much timing is being taken by the different memories that are being uh, come to know that from the weight instruction, weight state, which is nothing but an input which is coming from the clock generator which is being connected to this 8086. So, whenever this is logic 1, it waits to become test one, test, to, test signal to become 0 so that the wait state can be added to the one more machine cycle. Next is non-maskable interrupt. Now, non-maskable interrupt is a input. It is similar to the INTR, but INTR that is interrupt request can be maskable. But NMI that is non-maskable interrupt cannot be maskable irrespective of the priority or irrespective of the interrupt availability of microprocessor it is executed. So, whenever there is a specific hardware we need to get service at this time the NMI that hardware pin gives the interrupt request to this NMI pin. Also the speciality of this NMI pin is it is a second interrupt in the priority and it does not check the interrupt flag whether it is a enable or disable. Irrespective of that, it gives the service to the external hardware which is being connected to the 8086. Next, it is a reset. Whenever we have to reset some digital devices or whenever we have to reset something 8086 microprocessor, we use this reset signal. So, if this reset signal pin is held high for 4 clock cycles of the microprocessor, it resets. Now, what do you mean by reset is, it starts its execution from the starting. So, for this starting address is being taken as FFFF0 and it also clears the contents of interrupt flag. So, whenever it resets, it starts executing the program from the location which is given as FFFF0H. Now, next three signals which are being important to the 8086 microprocessor are clock, VCC and ground. So, without this clock, VCC and ground, none of the processor can able to work. So, as we discussed, the 806 is a digital device it, and it is being made from the synchronous devices. It needs the clocks to work. So, whatever the clock provided to this 806 and the internal part of the 806 that is provided from the input line clock. So, where there is a one more clock generator connected in the system of 806 which gives us the clock input that is being taken by the 806 from clock and for giving the supply for giving the 5 volt supply VCC is connected for giving the ground it, it is connected to the ground. Now the next pin in the pin configuration of 806 is a MN oblique 
MX bar that is used for stating the mode of 806 microprocessor. As we discussed in the features of 806 microprocessor, it can work in two main modes that is minimum mode and maximum mode. In minimum mode, it can able to operate in a single processor mode and in the maximum mode, it can operate in the multiprocessor mode. So with the help of this input pin, we can able to select whether the system has the single processor mode or the multiprocessor mode. So minimum or maximum mode pin selects the mode for processor. To select minimum mode, processor should connect it directly to the plus 5 volt and to select the maximum mode, the processor should connect to the directly to the ground. So this is a minimum is act, minimum uh, pin is active high and the maximum pin is active low. So same pin is multiplex for the two operations. Next pin in the pin configuration is BHE that is bus high enable bar oblique S1. The S1 is nothing but the status and a bus high enable pin is used to use in the 806 to enable most significant data bus bit during the read and write operation. So whenever there is a 16 bit data need to be accessed that is being accessed from the 8 to 8 bit memory location and for enabling this 2 bit to 8 bit memory location we use the memory banking concept. So for enabling that higher byte of a data higher or higher 8 bit data we need to use this bus high enable signal which is nothing but the output signal. So this signal is being connected to the memory externally connected through which it can able to access the higher 8 bit of a data. Next is IO bar oblique M. So next we are going to see the details which the pins which are being used in the minimum mode and after that we are going to see the pins which are being used in the maximum mode in which the first pin is IO bar oblique M. Now this pin is used for selecting whether the address bus contains some memory address or whether the address bus contains the IO port address. Now one more thing is 806 is not only connected to the memory, it can be connected to the different devices also, whether it can be input out input device or whether it can be output device. So whatever the data transfer on this address bus that carries the address of the memory or it is carrying the address of a port that can be come to know that from IO bar oblique M. So when it is carrying the address of a memory this pin becomes 1 and when the bus carries the address of a IO port this pin becomes 0. Next pin is nothing but W bar WR bar that is write signal. This write line is used when the microprocessor is writing data to memory and memory bus contains a valid address. So this signal is nothing but the output signal which enables the external memory. So when this write bar becomes enable that states that the data transferring from microprocessor to the outside memory and apart from that this write signal is being used for enabling the external buffers of the memory. Next is interrupt acknowledge. Now we have discussed about interrupt signal NMI also but how the hardware come to know that whether the interrupt which is being sent to the 806 whether that is used for processing or whether that can be processed by the 806 microprocessor or not. So for that purpose the interrupt acknowledge wave bar which is active low and output signal is being available to the 806. So interrupt acknowledgement signal is response to INTR pin. So when the INTR pin becomes 1 depending upon the availability of interrupt if the, the interrupt flag is being enabled this is used to this is used when the interrupt vector placed onto the address bus by the microprocessor. So for uh, acknowledging the hardware we are using the interrupt acknowledgement signal. Address latch enable. As we have discussed in the starting point itself there is a multiplex address and data bus. So for knowing whether the bus is carrying address or whether it is carrying the 
data it is being discussed uh, decided by the address latch enable so address latch enable shows whether the multiplex address data line carrying a address or a data so when it is one it carries the address when it is zero it carries the data now next signal is data transmit or received so in this data we can say it as a dt oblique r bar it shows that microprocessor data bus is in transmitting or receiving mode so whether whenever the data is being transferred from the external buffers so whether it is receiving or whether it is a transmitting that is being come to know from the dt oblique r bar so it is nothing but the output line which states that whether the microprocessor is receiving a data or whether it is a transmitting a data so for denoting it is a transmitting data it becomes one for denoting it is a receiving data it is it becomes zero now next is den bar data enable bus data enable bus it activates the external data buffer so whatever the data sent by the microprocessor that is being sent to the that is being stored into the external buffer so for enabling that buffer or buffer ics this den bar becomes one which is output line next is next pin in the minimum mode is hold and hold acknowledgement now in number of cases whenever we have to transfer the data we we don't need to use the instruction for specific purpose so one of the ic which is called as dma direct memory access is used in that case so direct memory access uh, ic is used whenever there is a whenever we have to transfer a lot of data from one memory to the another memory or one io device to the memory and vice versa so whenever this dma is connected to the microprocessor it sends a interrupt on this hold signal so it is the pin used to input request the dma so for specifically for the dma it is request line so hold set to 1 by the microprocessor gives a control of the buses to the dma controller so it gives the whenever the dma becomes whenever the hold becomes 1 it gives the access of this internal buses of the microprocessor to the external dma and hlda is nothing but the acknowledgement signal given to the external dma controller now next are nothing but the pins in maximum mode of 8086 now basically there are combination of three pins that is s2 bar s1 bar and s0 bar are used for denoting some status of 8086 microprocessor since there is a less number of pins available in 8086 uh, maximum mode the combination of these three pins are used for denoting some status of the 8086 so these signal bits indicates the function of current bus cycle these pins are used for special purpose which will be discuss in the respective bits so the com- as you can see the, there are eight combinations available for this s0 s1 s2 so when the s2 becomes 0 s1 becomes 0 and s0 becomes 0 it states that the 8086 is in is in a maximum mode and it is in interrupt acknowledgement mode again 001 states it is reading the data from io devices 010 states it is writing the data to the io devices 011 states that 8086 is in a halt mode it is not working in some case after that 100 states that 8086 is fetching a data from memory to the internal processor next is 101 which is states that the memory read operation is being performed by the microprocessor 110 states that it is a memory write operation so it indicates what operation to be what operation is being performed and lastly is 111 which states that it 8086 is a in passive mode we are looking at next pins of maximum mode that is rq bar oblique gt1 and rq bar oblique gt0 now as we discuss in the maximum mode maximum mode can be used for connecting the processor in multi processor configuration now multi processor configuration means we can have the number of processors connected to that now how the processor communicating between this 
so if there are if there is a one eight zero eight six microprocessor and the second one is nothing but eight zero eight seven microprocessor, which is a floating point of pressure for floating point of pressure. So in that case, how the eight zero eight six microprocessor and the eight zero eight seven microprocessor communicates? So for that purpose, these two signals are being used. So with this help of these two signals, we can connect two more processor in the multiprocessor system. So RQ stand for request. So whatever the request required from the 8087 microprocessor, for example, it sends to this RQ, and if the 8086 is giving or granting that request which is being given by the external microprocessor or external processor, it is being sent the active high signal that is one onto this grant. So that is being accessed by the 8087, and 8087 can use the some resources of the 8086, and so that 8086 and the another co-processor can work together. in the same way rq and jt0 also work so we can connect one more coprocessor to the 8086 with the help of this rq bar oblique jt0 now these signals bits indicate the function of the current bus cycle these pins are used by the special purpose which will be discussed in the bit that is we have discussed nextly lock output it is used to lock peripherals of the system so whenever we have to we don't want it to give any service to the respective processor so for that purpose lock output signal is being connected so when the lock output pin becomes one none of the peripheral can be able to access the 8086 so peripherals are being locked with the help of this lock output lastly the last two pins of pin configuration of 8086 in maximum mode are qs0 and qs1 which is called as q status bits now q status bits is nothing but the q available in 8086 microprocessor which is a 6 byte q okay so which is we which you are going to see in the bus interface in details so whether the q is empty or whether the q is filled or whether how much data is being available in the q that is being come to know that from from this q status 0 and q status 1 so when this uh, when q qs1 and qs0 are zero none of no operation is being performed from the q to the bus interface unit next when the q s1 becomes 0 and q s0 becomes 1 first byte of the operand is being fetched by the q when q s1 and q s0 is 1 0 the q is empty nothing is stored in the respective q and lastly when the q s q s0 is 1 and q s1 is 1 subsequent byte from the q is being accessed by the respective microprocessor so it states that how much which part of the instruction is being fetched by the q so basically the 0 1 which state the first byte of the opcode is being fetched and 1 1 is being subsequent byte from the same instruction is available in the q so in this lecture we have discussed the pin configuration of 8086 in detail so we have seen the different pins the 40 pins which are being available of this microprocessor so starting from the address bus after that ale after that the different interrupt signals after that the what are the pins in the minimum mode and what are the pins in the maximum mode we have seen the functions of each and every pin in the detail in this lecture thank you